My name is Eileen Zimmerman, and I'm the author of a memoir, Smacked, a story of white collar ambition, addiction, and tragedy. I was married for a long time to a man that was a lawyer and a very successful partner in a very prestigious law firm. And we were divorced for five years, but we stayed very close because we had two kids we were raising. And about two and a half years after we divorced, um, his name was Peter. He started behaving oddly, losing weight, um, just not acting like himself. He seemed really unhealthy. His skin was yellow. He had cuts and scratches all over his, his face. Um, he kept losing things, forgetting things, having car accidents. And this progressively got worse and worse until the last um, 18 months of his life. It was really terrible. At one point I thought maybe he has cancer, maybe he has an eating disorder, maybe he has a mental illness that's causing him to not take care of himself. But he denied all those things until finally one day he was terribly, terribly sick, vomiting, couldn't get out of bed. Our children who were uh, teenagers then were up at his house for the weekend and were very, very upset. And I had decided when we couldn't reach him for two days that I was going to go up to his house and I was going to take him to the hospital and we were going to figure out what was wrong with him. And when I got there, I had a key to his house. He had one to mine. I found that he had died and he died on the floor of his bedroom on the way to the bathroom. And after the medical examiner got there, I realized all the things, both literally and metaphorically that I did not see because he had track marks all over his arms and legs and torso. Um, and I thought, oh, he had a heart attack from working too hard when in fact he had been struggling with an intravenous drug addiction probably for at least a year. So by the time he died, although he was very compromised by the drugs, he was also very, very sick from endocarditis and he was basically septic and died. I kept focus on what was right in front of me. And I tried to avoid thinking about what was going to happen, what could go wrong. You know, would my daughter not be able to go to college? Peter was the money machine in our lives. I was a writer. I was like, am I going to be able to pay my own mortgage? What am I going to do with his house? Is this a crime? Like, I just didn't understand anything. And I didn't understand anything about death. I was 51. I had never had somebody close to me die, certainly not of a drug addiction or an overdose. I relied very heavily on my friends and my family. For the first time in my life, I think I decided I was really going to need people to help me, just to kind of help me figure out how to get through this. I also did um, a kind of trauma counseling called EMDR. It's eye movement um, reprocessing, and I think it's desensitization and reprocessing, right, which is very common now in trauma treatment, but um, really, really helped me and my kids because it allowed me to reprocess some of the really visceral images, for instance, Peter's body on the floor, all of that really helped. But I think the big takeaway for me was that um, I tried not to think too far ahead and I tried not to think about the past too much because all that did was provoke a lot of anxiety for me. I learned a lot about addiction and how it hijacks the brain and affects behavior. I learned that sometimes the people you think you know intimately and deeply can be remarkably good at keeping whole sides of themselves hidden from you. I learned also, I think that sometimes people that love you will lie to you over and over again if they are struggling with an addiction and that they will forsake everything, including their own children to find the drug that they need to feel better. Uh, and I also learned that I was able to bear a lot more than I thought I would be able to, both for myself and for my two children. I managed through a very dark and difficult time, and I sorted things out for everyone, including myself, and that gave me a lot of confidence that I could handle a lot more than I thought I could in my life. One thing I wish I'd done was trust my gut. Like, if you see someone you love and or you know well, and something seems really off, and you know something isn't right. If, if what they say doesn't make sense, if their be behavior seems odd, if they don't look right, if they don't look healthy, I would say don't dismiss it, which is what I did as, oh, you know, you're being ridiculous. Look at him. He has a big job. He's fine. Like, if you think something is off, probably something is off. And I would say, you know, don't be blinded by your own biases either. For in my case, I thought, well, this guy is white and wealthy and well-educated, you know, it's certainly not drugs, you know, and of course it was, every sign was there. And don't be afraid, I think, to be vulnerable. 
and say to someone, I care about you and I'm, and I'm worried because something seems off. You don't seem right. You don't look well. I don't know if you want to talk to me about it, but I want you to know I'm here. That's the advice I would give is to sort of trust your intuition. If something feels wrong, I would bet something is wrong and I would act on that.